Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about Fleet, the next JetBrains ID. That to me sounds like the promised land, right? I use a bunch of IDs like Rider, Android Studio, Idea, PyCharm, and then VS Code and some sometimes, you know, I sometimes still use Notepad++ for editing different files. So for me, uh, having one single thing to support all languages to JetBrains level basically sounds like a brilliant idea, right? Why would I not want this? And when they did the announcement, when they did the demo, which was okay, nothing too crazy, I was still excited. I was there like, sign me up, uh, I'll do, uh, you can have my email, I'm there waiting one week, two week, three week, I, I don't remember exactly how long I waited, I just remember checking my email every day, I was like, did I have it yet, did I have it yet? And there it was, one day, that I like. Jet brains on there and fleet. I saw the two words. I was like, it's time. I opened it up. Uh, I got the email, got the installation, all installed like a little kid waiting for my Christmas present. And you know, I open it up and it's a pair of socks. Even probably even worse. It's just cold. It's just cold. I never got cold, but I felt like I got cold. And uh, anyway, I mean, it's not good. Uh, I don't know why they released it so early. I don't know, maybe timeline pressure or whatever. Uh, today we're going to be talking about and potentially speculating if Fleet can kill VS Code. I, as a JetBrains fanboy, and I really enjoy their product. So I hope uh, th their product actually gets there. W what does Fleet need to do to kill VS Code, right? At the moment, VS Code is free. If Fleet isn't going to be free, no chance, right? So first thing that we're going to assume is that Fleet is going to be free, fingers crossed, maybe like a community version and then an additional version, whatever their team comes up with. Even then, I think if it's not 100% free, uh, it's just not happening. So let's assume Fleet will be 100% free. Uh, what's the next step? The next step is really the smart mode. If a Fleet is free and you have dedicated teams working on the, this smart mode, this thing that you just push the button, it's on any language that is in your environment, it just detects it and it works perfectly. You no longer need to tell people you need to install this extension, you need to install that extension and then the person goes and he types in JavaScript or Vue or whatever other extension and there's like a thousand extensions for the same thing, why isn't there only one? What the hell, right? So that experience itself basically gets fixed here. And now we will basically go into the developer experience. Once you, you basically open up and you can just code. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how the developer experience in Fleet is going to be better, although it is still missing, right? A lot of things are missing from Fleet, but we're still gonna pretend that it's there, okay? We're gonna go and start with uh, VS Code. We're gonna take the perspective of a beginner, somebody who just went on YouTube and then typed in, how do I make program? And the guy on the other end went, uh, you want to do professional web developer programmer things, you gotta learn JavaScript or you gotta learn Python. And that's where the tutorial hell will begin. Uh, they will start their journey something like this. They will do index.js. Uh, they will console a log. Everything's gonna work beautifully. IntelliSense, hello world. Obviously they don't know anything what is happening here and hopefully what the person explains to them is you type in node you and well you give it this file this node application he shows location to the binary and he says that application takes in this text and does stuff with it hopefully he then goes on and shows the person how to make a similar application so he gets an idea of what node is but anyway i'm getting sidetracked here this is not about how to make tutorials and how to teach people we are here to try to get an understanding of the experience now another path that could be taken is this play button, this run and debug. To me, this seems uh, harmful. This is uh, like as if the editor itself is running your code, which is not the case. It will still do the same thing in the background, right? So I just think it's not, not a very good option and shouldn't be used, but however, it is still there. It will still be used. JetBrains is going to do it better. So that's the JavaScript experience. Uh, if we try to do some imports, right? path equals require we get the request animation frame in the global namespace whoever made java good stuff um so yeah we got path there and you know you get intel it's, it's all good so it's it's easy uh, stuff works everything that you want as a beginner 
you can run your application, uh, the editor helps you, all good. Python, similar story, not too far, index.py, we do print, we do hello world, we don't do semicolons, again, we have this interpreter application, we pass stuff into it, hopefully then you already know the spiel, where you get hello world, hopefully you learn a little bit about the buffer and that you have to save your file in order to see changes. Common mistake at beginner level, right? Uh, so from date time, import date time, similar story, right? And then in PyCharm, you'd be able to do something like this, uh, where you do print and it will just uh, change stuff for you. Here you need to learn about home and end to kind of like jump between places or like select and cut, but uh, generally all of your key binds still work here. And it's good, uh, you can download different key maps. Uh, but yeah, it's free, it works, how can it be better? That is essentially the question. Uh, well, let's take a look at the fleet experience. Here is the button, no searching for extensions, no outdated extensions, no rubbish. You, uh, let's say it's disabled, you press the enable button and uh, you know it takes whatever, however many seconds and stuff works. And there you can so updating indexes, oh, I, had, I don't have anything, so it's not updating anything. The first thing that is, you know, going to trip you up is you're going to try to create some files. You will see the key bind here, although you will see it after you're going to be like, well, oh, where's my thing, right? So you either click on this or you click on this. You, th this is your area where you can create file. The rest of this is pretty much useless. This plus button is misleading. So, you know, a couple, I think the UI looks beautiful. However, there are a couple of misleading things here so far. Anyway. Let's look at some cool things that you can do. You can do lol slash uh, index.js and there you got your folder and your file. Again, a couple of things that just don't work. You can't delete folders for some reasons. I, I, don't, I don't know. All right, so let's show this folder. The lol is still there. Let's, let's get rid of it. Uh, so yeah, anyway, let's create a file, index.js and let's go through the same motion where we just console you can see at the moment it is a little bit slow i have no doubt that uh, this id will become a lot faster it is using java or i think they will probably build it with kotlin where, which is still jvm under the hood which is 100 percent going to be faster than electron and javascript that is being used for vs code so yeah let's do console log we will do hello world so here again we want to run our application as i said before you want to do the terminal um let's do not dot net but rather node index.js we run it we get the hello world if you are familiar with jetbrains ids what you're going to see is you're going to see a play button here you're going to right click play button right click on here play button right click on here play button wherever you click your mouse button you will be able to run your code right you're going to have like 10 JavaScript files. You can just run them individually by right clicking on them. That's the kind of thing I'm going to expect to see. I'm not going to be expecting this create wrong configuration fleety. And then this thing, you know, if a beginner looks at this, who hasn't programmed before, he's going to be like, oh, command. Oh yeah, I need the command. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. You know, he had nobody, this kind of person hasn't seen Jason before. If he looks at this, this is gonna do some serious damage as well as like the templating, not good. Let's see, can, can you do this command? Okay, yeah, there we go. So, you know, they still got a little bit of ways to go with this, but yeah, anyway, I will never be filling that thing out. Maybe if I need to do something advanced, but not a chance in hell. Just so if any of you are still waiting for fleet and are excited to try it out, don't be. This is what you're going to be greeted with. So const path, let's do the same. Require path. And then, you know, fleet tries and it tries its best. And it tries a little bit too much. Basically, everything is anything. Therefore, it's nothing. You get all this stuff. It's way too much. You might as well just be using sublime text at this point. Now, uh, let's move on to Python. Again, hopefully shouldn't come as a surprise. Similar experience index pi we do you if it helps no it doesn't even give you the other closing bracket right uh, i'll have to put that one there myself uh save the file python index pi we still get the hello world you know you still get the 
saving all the file actually in the application. Uh, same thing here. So if we say from date time, import date time, Python package names. Oh, what was that? Oh, okay. It was it was close, you know. And again, date time. Try to use it. Nothing. We get nothing. This is why I said I basically felt like I just got calls. Uh, but you know, you get this print stuff, and it will just do its JetBrains magic. So you still get a little bit of JetBrains craftsmanship uh, bleeding through, but you know, it's just not on the level yet. And the stuff that you'd expect to work just doesn't work. And uh, yeah, primarily about running your application. Same thing. Right click on here, run. Running your code should be a lot easier than it is running in VS Code. So yeah, let's do a quick recap. If Fleet is free, right? No paywall. You just install it like you do with VS Code. You then don't need to install any extensions. You get perfect code IntelliSense, not the current experience. Let's say all the stuff is just working brilliantly and running your application takes less clicks and you don't need to write configuration. That is also a win. So overall, Fleet has the potential to be the better experience. Right now, given JetBrains' reputation of making their software paid, I don't see Fleet being entirely free. The rest of the points with the smart mode, I'm pretty sure it will work. The rest of the other nice features of uh, JetBrains that they usually have like play buttons here so you can run your code from this line or, you know, it will identify where the main function is, where the tests are, and you will be able to run the individual tests from the UI. All of that, I am 100% sure will be working perfectly. And yeah, for those of you that are still waiting for Fleet, uh, don't be so excited. Relax. Not done yet. Hopefully you at least enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. Join my Discord server. Uh, also check out my Patreon. I have some new tiers over there. Hopefully I'll see you around. Have a good day.